What's up, YouTube? So I have been playing Weathering Waves constantly. I am probably at a solid 40, 50, maybe even 60 hours into the game. Um, I have been... I beat it. I've beaten the, the story. <coughs> um, I've been playing on controller. I, I've decided to play on controller. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, I've done some endgame now. I've done a little bit of every endgame mode. I've been building some characters. I've been farming some echoes. So after doing my first impression video, I kind of want to talk about now, like, what's changed, what I've experienced that I didn't get to experience after my first day of playing the game. Uh, and just my thoughts and opinions on the game after getting, a, like, a more full experience of it. So I think I will start off with the story, since that's the first thing most people are going to experience. You know, you kind of get thrown right into the story. You got to do it for a little bit and so you can move on to other stuff. So, for the story, <laughs> um, honestly, I was wrong, but only kind of. In my initial impressions, I said that the story wasn't good, besides when we met Scar, which at the time was definitely true. After finishing the story, I, it's really good. I think the story is super good, Acts 3 through 6. But Acts 1 and 2 were brutal. Which, overall, I is not good for a game. So, I'm gonna give Genshin some credit here. I, I know I rip on Genshin around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Genshin a little credit here. Genshin, one thing they did do well is they have you like do that cool fight against the Valen in the air right away and it has this like whole threat of like the Valen looming over the city early and then Mondstadt really slows down after that. <laughs> but at that point it kind of already has you like attached you know like it kind of already has you hooked onto the game which is very important for a game. A game needs to hook you right away. I, I know people are gonna be like oh the, like it's just zoomer brain like people want to People want, like, instant gratification. And, like, yes, well, that's partly true. From, like, a business standpoint and a game design standpoint, you need to hook people right away. People play video games because they're fun. You can't tell people, oh, like, you have to play 20 hours or X amount of hours before the game gets fun. That's, that's like, Final Fantasy's issue. Obviously, this game doesn't have nearly as long of a story as Final Fantasy, but if you ever played Final Fantasy XIV, uh, people always talk about how Realm Reborn is like really slow and grindy, and it is. I've done it, it's terrible, you have to go through so much. And people are like, oh, but just wait till you get to Heaven Sword, it's gonna be fun. You can't tell people that. That is not good design for a game. You can't tell people, play 50 hours of this game, and then maybe then you will have fun. Games need to be good right away. And I think that is definitely Wuthering Wave's biggest weak point right now. We're gonna get that out of the way right away. I think that is Weathering Wave's biggest con and gonna be the biggest thing holding it back and honestly something that they should probably rework in the future. Because every time you get a new player into this game, if they have the experience, I, I, her name's Yang Yang. I, my chat and I have been calling her Yap Yap because she just talks so much. Like if a new player comes in and they have to experience that first part of the story, the first two chapters of just Yap Yap talking the entire time, and then going to like the laboratory, I hated the laboratory talking to like Mortefi and like Baiji. I felt like I was there for two years. Being like claustrophobic being in there for so long. Um, stuff like that is really bad for the longevity of the game and trying to keep new players. Because you're just not like, that. you're starting them off on a bad foot. Okay, now that we have the biggest, my biggest complaint about the game out of the way, which is the early part of the story. Chapters 3 through 6 when you meet Scar are amazing. The music is really good. The cutscenes are really good. Um, the atmosphere, really good. The story is super good. If I had to rate it, I would say it's worse than HSR's 1.0. HSR's 1.0 was super good. Bella Bog was peak. Genjo Lofu was kind of boring. Heard of Space Station was whatever. I feel like you were gone from Heard of Space Station in like 10 minutes. Everyone like everyone says Heard of Space Station was slow. I feel like you were gone from there in like no time at all. Um I will say definitely better than Monstat and Leeway. Definitely better than 1.0. Sorry for Genshin. 
The only thing being, again, I think Genshin does a better job dra like drawing you in in that first hour with like the Valen and like this cool dragon. Like it like sets you off on this quest of where you think you're gonna like kill a dragon. And then it kind of just turns out you kill a random Hydro Abyss Mage. And it's like, okay, that was really lame. But at, they at least do a good job of drawing you in in that first hour and making it seem like an interesting story. Well, this has the opposite issue. The beginning seems really boring and then ends up really fun. Um, Going off of that, the cutscenes are amazing. Cutscenes are super well animated. I really, really like the cutscenes. I think they were super duper good. Um, music is really good. It's like, you could hear right now, like, this music is so good. Um, the music during, like, the, the final chapter, it, it really, like, I, I maybe just, like, want to, like, fight something. Like, yeah, let's go! Like, it's pumping up, like, you know, like, it's really good. Um, on top of that, I like that they had NPCs and, like, playable characters around you during, like, the big battle. It makes the fight feel way more significant than if it was just you like fighting all these enemies like actually having allies on your side having like the random npcs and then actual named characters fighting with you felt really really cool i like that a lot really good kind of killed my frames but that's okay i just have an old computer that's my fault um the only thing is I i've heard a lot of people say this i don't think the music is necessarily as memorable but i think it is more suiting and more atmospheric for the uh for the game i think it, i think it fits way more i think it definitely sets the tone better um besides that the sound effects are really good really clean really satisfying when you get a perfect dodge i love that sound when you do like the little like as spectra rover you like snap forward after a perfect dodge or when you like snap towards your sword when you throw it that noise is really cool too uh when you parry that noise is super satisfying like the sound effects in this game very satisfying um now voice acting jp fantastic i haven't done korean i haven't done chinese jp is absolutely fantastic really good but I like to stream. I stream the entire story. I I like to have it to where my chat could just listen. They don't have to read the text. So I played the story in English. Right now, I'm in Japanese. But during the story, I play in English. The English voice acting has its moments. I, I talked about this in the last video. So I'm not going to go over it as much this time. <laughs> the English voice acting has its moments where it's actually really good. Scar does really well. Gian does really well. You have like the random side characters that have a ton of emotion. And you're like, why are these guys not voice acting the main characters? Um, and then I, then you have characters that are like, they have nice voices. But it's just like no emotion. And it feels like they have no direction. <laughs> For example, Yang Yang. Yang Yang has like a very nice voice. Even Rover. Rover has like a nice voice, but it's very like it feels like it lacks direction. Like sometimes Rover would talk and she would talk like this. Like it sounded like an AI trying to in like I imitate a person. Um that is my second biggest complaint about the game is the English voice acting. And I understand that like Rover and Yang Yang are supposed to be like more calm, relaxed, chill characters. They're not supposed to be like super duper emotional, but you can still have a calm character and show emotion. And I think a really good example of that is Jinzi. Um, she's the white haired like dragon girl, the, the like Madam Magistrate. Um, I think she had the best voice acting of all the female characters. Like her voice was like very calm and like that's how she's supposed to be. The character was like calm, like regal, like composed, but you could still hear like when she's fighting Scar the like the like anger when she's concerned, you could still hear the like fear, the like 
that she's scared, that she's worried. I think she was a more like calm, mellow voice done very well that still had emotion. So they like if they want to keep that more like calm feel to Rover and Yang Yang, that's totally fine. But they they need to still have that emotion that like Jin Z had. Um. Besides that, I forget if I talked about this last time. I know I talked about this in my chat. At first, I said the world felt kind of small. At least looking at the map. The more I played, it actually feels huge. Like if I wanted to run from here to here, it would take forever. Like it, it feels huge the more I play. It actually feels massive. I remember like... I didn't even explore the whole map yet when I made my first one. I think I still had a little bit down here I hadn't gotten, and I know for a fact I definitely didn't have up here. It it feels huge now. It feels massive. Each like zone feels very unique compared to the other ones. Um, they did a fantastic job with the map. I really really like it. I think it's beautiful. It I think they've done an amazing job. Um. And then the nice thing about that is tra like the travel. We talked about this last time. Um, the movement feels really, really good in this game. It feels like there's actual like skill to the movement that you could learn from. And after using controller for a while, I really it feels amazing on controller. It feels so satisfying. Um, one thing, if you don't know how to do, like I think it's cool that there's like little tech in the game like this to make it even easier to like get around. So you can do like a like a quadruple jump. So when you plunge, yeah. see how you jump higher? Like you jump and you plunge and you jump even higher. So you can actually cancel that. And you can do like a quadruple jump. So you can do... And jump super high. So I, I like that there's like little stuff like that in the games that like help you get around faster. Or like reach places that you can't normally reach. There's like little skill caps like even getting around the world. <laughs> um, besides that... Gotcha. I haven't done too much of the gotcha. I am I am no longer free to play. I'm free to play plus, and that's how it's gonna stay. I decided to get the monthly pass, and I decided to get the battle pass. Um, I just thought it would be better for my content and what I wanted to do to get the battle pass so that I could build more characters, and to get the monthly pass so that I could get an extra character here and there, and make like more guides and more teams and stuff. That's why I did that, but I, I still, I wanted to have like a more free-to-play-esque experience, so that's why I'm not going to be buying any jades. I, I will buy skins if they come out. I do want to support the game. I will buy skins if they come out. Um, but I won't be buying any packs just like directly. Uh, besides that, the rates are a little better in this game. And it's uh, 10 less pity. Overall, I think it's one of the most fair gotcha systems I've seen in a while. Uh, the weapon is 100% guaranteed. That's awesome. You get a weapon selector here, which is awesome. Which I'm almost done with this one. Uh, I already have Jean Jim, which is the 5 star I really wanted. And I got Encore as a random one. So I want Verena now. So I could have a I could have three sustainers on my account. One for each team. And then once I do this, I'm actually not going to be pulling on this banner with... Uh, the standard poles anymore i'll be pulling on this because i really want the sword for rover um overall i think the gotcha is really fair i like it it's just like a slightly honestly even more than just slightly it's like it's like hsr's gotcha system plus basically is how i describe it um next the ecosystem i am kind of bad about the ecosystem i don't love doing that i don't like like leaving my character and getting locked into like an echo animation it feels like very vulnerable uh in combat but i can understand why other people like it i think it's cool you kind of have like a pokemon that you could turn into um but in terms of farming relics i really like the system uh i got a super good uh echo recently i got a dreamless one that's absolutely insane I really like it. I like that it's harder to get what you want compared to HSR. Uh, it's it's like way more random. It's like you have to need to get two, three costs with like 
it's like so say for havoc rover i need to get two that have the havoc set that are also like a havoc recost with like the havoc damage that's going to take a bit but the, the nice thing is you can farm it as much as you want meaning there's no reason to really put your resources into suboptimal echoes when you could farm as much as you want to get the best echoes like if you're if you're trying to be meta there's no reason to to spend on suboptimal echoes you just keep farming until you get the like really good ones um so overall i do like that that you kind of have unlimited farming kind of always gives you something to do something to work on if like I don't know. I, I think the way you should really play gacha games is just do your dailies when there's no content and log in when there is content. But if you are one of those people that wants to play all the time, there's a great reason to play all the time is that you could always keep farming your echoes. It gives you something to do. Uh, okay. Now we're going to get into the more gameplay parts of it. So we're going to start with combat. Combat in this game still feels amazing. It actually feels better. The further into the game you get, the better it feels. Like the more you learn, you kind of like... Not only do you have three characters, we have three characters, all with an echo. So you have to learn three echoes, three characters, their whole rotation. It's really cool. I've seen like clips of people where they're just constantly changing. It's just like, like you constantly have like multiple people on the field, con like multiple like echoes coming out. It's really cool. Some of the stuff you could do with the combat. I, I was talking about my chat. I don't think it's the best mobile combat. I think PGR was more made for mobile. That's why you have like the little circles at the bottom, right? They have like the little circles, you match three of them and then you do an ability. That is more comfortable and more suited for like if you're playing on your phone. Now, if you're playing on PC or like controller, this is the best combat in the game, in my opinion, like, or like in any gacha game. I think it is super duper good, super super uh, satisfying. I really really like the combat in this game. I think it's super duper good. And then end game, um, I mean we already have three modes, which is really cool. You have like the holograms, which is just like a like a really hard boss fight. Um, you have the, I call it Suzumi. I forget what it's actually called. It's the thing with the door, Sim Universe. Um, I really like that. It feels really easy though. Kind of just like some of those buffs are absolutely insane like you could like i went in with like a level 30 rover and was fighting like level 70s and it's just like you just let the buffs carry you it doesn't even matter like what level your character is it feels way more just like pick the right blessings compared to like building a good character um Tower of Adversity just feels exactly the same M to MOC. Not really much of a difference. That's fine. It's kind of like your most standard, I guess, fight. Like, you don't get any buffs. Kind of just, like, fight a group of enemies. It's fine. It's not, like, the most exciting game mode, but it's pretty cool. I'd say Holograms are probably my favorite. They seem to be the hardest. I think it's the most fun kind of doing, like, a super hard version of a boss. I really like the Holograms. That's definitely my favorite part of Endgame. Um... I would say Endgame is... I'd say the Endgame content is like on par with HSR, but that's saying a lot. HSR has had a full year to add in more Endgame content and to change and tweak their Endgame content. For this game to have the same level of like Endgame content as HSR is really good. Because I'm, I'm going to assume, I really hope so. Please do not be a Genshin 2.0. From the way the devs are acting though, I don't think it will be. I, th I think they will keep improving on the game, keep adding more endgame. I really hope they do. Because if they if they do, if they treat this game how HSR treats their game, this is going to be like one of the best gacha games ever. It's so good. Honestly, it already is one of the best gacha games ever. And then lastly, is it better than Genshin? Yes, I, it really does feel like Genshin 2. If if you were one of those people that wanted like Endgame and Genshin, if like you were one of those people that saw the potential of what Genshin could be, this game feels like what I wanted Genshin to be when I first played it three years ago. This feels like everything I hoped Genshin would be one day. Like, 
I I still have Genshin downloaded on my computer. When Chlorine D comes out, I'll probably go pull for Chlorine D. But I'm not gonna lie, going around Genshin and having to climb up a like a hill like this instead of running straight up it is gonna feel terrible. Having to like I don't know if you ever played Genshin, but if you do like the the jumps to run faster, like that's gonna be annoying. Not having like the tether to get around, having the combat be so much slower. It just, overall, it just feels like, it feels like what Genshin could have been and what everyone wanted it to be. And in my opinion, I, I don't know how someone could play this game and then go back to Genshin and like not feel like they're just playing like, it's, I feel like it would be like playing a older version of Minecraft. You ever played like an older version of Minecraft? It's like you lose like certain things, quality of life things that they add into the game. You learn, you lose like certain biomes. It just like it feels, it feels like a like Minecraft light. If you ever played like a Minecraft, um, like a old version of Minecraft, uh, that's what I feel like Genshin would feel like after playing this. It would just feel like you're playing an old update of Weathering Waves, almost in a way. There's really not too much, at least gameplay-wise, that Genshin does better than Weathering Waves. I'd say the only thing Genshin really has over Weathering Waves right now is... Honestly, just... The world feels cozy. Um, the English voice acting is okay. I mean, it's better than Weathering Waves, but that's not saying much. Um... That's really all I could think of. And it's really not coming from a place of like, I hate Genshin. Like, I, I love Genshin. I played it for three, like, played it for like two and a half years and I quit for the last year. I really liked it. I always wanted it to be more than it was, but I don't know. Weathering Waves did that instead. Um, last thing, I meant to mention this earlier. My other complaint for the game, other complaint for the game is that we don't have a way to store our energy. I honestly they should really just copy HSR. Like you already copied it with like the um 10 per 10 per hour and then 240 in a day. Like you have a copy where you, like after a full day you'll get a full thing. Just add in the the reserve part. Just rip it straight from HSR add it into this. Like, that, that is my other complaint. Just add that into the game. I don't know why it's not in here. It'd be nice. Or, honestly, I don't care. Just, you could even rip the condensed resin from Genshin. It's way worse than HSR. I like HSR's version more. But if you want to do the condensed resin, that's fine too. Um. Besides that, this is my favorite gacha, for sure. I really like this game. It's super fun. Um, I still have so- I beat this story. I have so much content to go. I probably played 50-60 hours and still have so much more to do. I mean, my characters are like barely built. Um, I've done a bit of endgame, but not like anything super duper hard yet. Um, I have so much world exploration to do. Oh yeah, okay, that's another thing. The puzzles are kind of eh, eh. I really- I, I will say- that's one thing Genshin did do well. Uh, Inazuma's puzzles I thought were really good. I really liked Inazuma's puzzles. I would say puzzles like that are better than Wuba's puzzles. Uh, Wuba's puzzles are kind of... Uh, they're pretty simple. I I'd like to see them a little bit harder. I think that'd be fun. But again, that's like a super like side thing that's really not too important. Like, I don't know. Most people don't care for the puzzles. I just think it's a fun little side thing to do sometimes while I talk to my chat. Um... Bosses are really cool too. I really like the Scar boss. He was cool. Anyways, those are really all my thoughts. My things I like about the game. Things that I don't like about the game. Um, It really feels like this is what Genshin would have been if it had HSR's devs and had like... If they had taken care of Genshin the way that the devs had taken care of HSR. 
that's what this feels like which is awesome because like i love honkai sorrow but i don't like turn-based games i i gave honkai sorrow a shot because i really like honkai impact and i ended up loving it because how they treated the game and like i like the characters and they they made the the turn-based combat like at least satisfying satisfying for me even though i don't usually like it now this is like perfect. This is like the open world, like the type of game that I like, but with the, the devs that treat it like it's like, like how they treat Honkai Star Rail, I think is amazing. Anyways, YouTube, let me know if I was unfair <laughs> about anything, if I was like biased, because in the end, I'm sure there's some bias. I really like this game. Maybe I'm a little more biased towards this because I haven't played Genshin in a bit. So maybe, maybe I'm a little salty or something. Who knows? If you don't agree with me, let me know in the comments. Anyways, see you in the next video. Bye!